everybody and welcome to this week's Facebook Live. Um, thank you for watching live and thank you for those who watch over on YouTube as well. So, um, last week I talked about um, an early warning sign in a relationship. This week um, I'm talking about um, something that can negatively impact your relationship. Again, I'm going to talk about intimate relationships again, but as I said before, in fact, this this one I'm talking about as well as the one I talked about last week. Um, it, it doesn't matter what relationship it is. I am referring to intimate relationships here. But, you know, we have relationships with everybody, including ourselves. So, you know, how we communicate with ourselves is important and how we communicate with others is also important. So, uh, you know, in a relationship, um, what I'm going to talk about today is could, could transfer out to other relationships depending on how you're doing with this this topic so healthy relationships again um they do require a number of things they require us to be honest uh not only with our partner but with ourselves we have to be honest with ourselves at least we have to be also be supportive again not just with the other person but we have to support ourselves and um, we have to be able to communicate in a healthy manner um otherwise you know a lot of problems can stem from um you know miscommunication or unhealthy communication skills um and part of the healthy communication skills is the ability to express ourselves appropriately when we fail to express ourselves appropriately we are actually setting ourselves ourselves up for failure we're also setting our partner up for failure and the relationship to have, think about the relationship as a third party we're setting it up uh, um, for failure as well so you know why don't we why don't we do this why don't we express ourselves appropriately and why don't we ask for what we need and want there can be a number of things here a number of reasons people do it um it could be to do with past traumas in our childhood and as an adult it could be fear um we could also add in some cultural differences if you're in a, in a relationship not just as i said in a relationship with um somebody an intimate relationship but what in you know a lot of relationships with other people that could be from different cultural ba uh, backgrounds than you there could be language barriers as well and that's not just for people coming from another country but there could be a language barrier with somebody with a disability so we have to be mindful of those things that that you know cultural differences and language barriers can cause a problem when we try to express ourselves and if we're not doing it clearly enough then it causes us problems so always check in with your other half or whoever it is the relationship is with but always check in with your other half about these issues maybe they have an undiagnosed disability maybe it's a cultural difference between the two of you as i said maybe it's a language barrier maybe they have some trauma from their past childhood maybe you do maybe it's fear some sort of a fear and i'll get into those in a minute but you know you need to be talking to one another you need to be working these things out um, and as you get to know one another throughout from dating right from day one you should be trying to get to know one another but it's never too late um you know as you get to know one another these things should improve they should really be improving and if they're not i would suggest that you um, review the relationship and perhaps ask for couple therapy um, sooner rather than later to prevent things deteriorating even further. Um, so the next thing I would say to you is let's go back to the fears um, because people's fears um, you know, can stem from a number of things, um, including our own thinking patterns. So maybe not from childhood, maybe not from a past, uh, traumatic experience but just our own fear our own insecurities inside us um, our own thinking patterns so you know it could be a fear of rejection a fear of abandonment very um, much those two would be very much um, associated with childhood traumas um, or it could be um, you know if you've had a past relationship that was less than savory so not even domestic violence but Anywhere that, you know, you felt rejected or abandoned by the person because they had issues, not you, they had, but this has caused you this fear of, you know, ab abandonment, uh, a fear of, you know, mistrust um, and a fear of rejection. But you also could have a fear of failure and a fear of success. They can come in here too. 
what if the relationship succeeded? You've never, maybe you've never known what a successful or unhealthy relationship looks like. And this can be fearful for you because it's uncharted territory for you. Um, we can also have, you know, a lack of trust, as I said, um, which is fear based and, you know, low self esteem as well could come in here. Um, you know, basically people fail to express themselves um, appropriately. And I like to use the word appropriately here when they're afraid of what the outcome might be. So think back on it. Are you afraid you're going to be rejected? Are you afraid you're going to, you know, be abandoned? Are you afraid this is going to fail? Um, does it tie into your low self-esteem, your own thinking patterns, your lack of trust? The other thing we might be doing, we might be holding on to some resentments and actually avoiding conflict altogether because we see conflict as negative. We've only ever seen negative conflict between, you know, two people. Uh, Particularly, um, you know, maybe f friends or uh, family members or parents. We've only seen uh, the worst side of, of an intimate relationship. So we, we become fearful of any type of conflict. And therefore that translates to all our relationships, not just the intimate ones. Um, so we, we hold it in, we shove it down, we stuff it down and then thinking gets going. So, you know, we have these fears um and what we're doing there is we're assuming that the worst is going to happen um we're if this this outcome will be the worst it is instead of using healthy communication or learning how to communicate in a healthy way because it's never too old to learn this and you're never um it's never too late to learn this but i would recommend you reach out um for you know for support and for help um with a therapist individual therapy if you feel it's you and also couples therapy might need to take place at the same time other thing that can come in here is a fear of anger as i said people can have a fear of conflict but there could be also fear of anger in that so perhaps again you've only ever seen anger expressed in an unhealthy way and yes, anger can feel all consuming and it can be expressed in negative ways, but it doesn't have to be, particularly when we learn to communicate when we're angry, we can communicate appropriately. And then once we learn that skill and it is a skill and you can learn it, we can then let go of that fear of anger. Um, and another common reason um, people uh, people uh, we find with couples is um, they 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 simply don't know how to ask for what they need and want um, they're afraid to do it and they're afraid to do it for a number of reasons one again going back to they fear the negative response they fear they can they can come across as being needy um, and again it could stem from the past not necessarily from childhood again yes it could be the fact that in childhood we were simply taught you know we couldn't ask for what we want we couldn't ask for what we needed um we were told that what we wanted was selfish was unnecessarily uh, unnecessary or we we could be simply have been ignored um but it also those things can also be learned if you've had a previous intimate relationship with somebody um or even in a work environment if you've come from a toxic work environment you may have withdrawn within in yourself and you may feel oh i couldn't possibly ask i, I couldn't possibly speak up um you you might feel selfish you might feel guilt-ridden if you asked for something um because you know you were just simply dismissed or spoken over or you know used and abused in that in that toxic environment and and then as a result you know we do hold in our feelings our emotions our needs and our wants and you know generally we've learned unhealthy boundaries here and we've learned that these unhealthy boundaries are okay and it's really not a great lesson to learn at any time in anybody's life um that you know you're you're being selfish your your needs and wants are unnecessary um you know your needs and wants are going to be ignored it's never a good time to learn this but it's especially true for a child um and you'll probably find that if this is the case for you if this is this has been your pattern well then you know you're not setting healthy boundaries in other ways outside of an intimate relationship 
Um, so, you know, you really need to talk to a therapist about this. I can't, um, you know, I can't stress that enough. This is something that can be dealt with pretty easily and pretty quickly, but you need to reach out for help and support to get that. Um, so learning to communicate effectively our needs and wants in a relationship is essential. It's vital. It's part of setting healthy boundaries. And remember, they can be learnt at any time. But you do need to get to the root cause of why you're not asking for what you need and what you want to be met from the other person. If you need help with that, if you need help with healing past traumas, not just from childhood, but from another relationship, then I would suggest that you reach out. Reach out for support. Um, and ask for a referral to a therapist or self-refer to a therapist. Um, you can do some things to um, self-help and I've spoken at length about different ways you can always help yourself. Again, you can meet your own needs. That's basic self-care. Meeting your own needs is always basic self-care. Learn to say no. Again, I've gone into that in great detail. In a previous video, I've, I've also spoken about learning how to communicate effectively in a relationship done a video on that reaching out for support and making sure you're surrounded by positive support team um, again i've talked about that before um anger management if you need it you can go get it or assertiveness skills can be learned so easily um, they need practice um but you can learn them now there are links to all those uh, blogs videos and podcasts um in this week's blog so you know click on the link in the description and you'll find all those you can also have a look at my uh, book the building blocks of self-care because i do go into meeting your own needs and that it's all about meeting your own basic needs but also about learning uh, to communicate and how to say no and you know healthy relationships that's all in that and that book contains worksheets as well there are three more books up there on my website or are also over on amazon um, so go and do check those out. So that's this week. Um, and again, thank you for um, watching live. And I will talk to you all again next week. Have a good week. And uh, for those of you who are breaking now for Easter holidays, um, have a good two weeks off and have a rest. Uh, you know, you've worked very hard. If you're head down and into the study books, do take breaks. Look after yourself as well. And I will talk to you all again in, next week. Thank you for listening.